Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the program. It's the Monday edition. I hope you had a great weekend. I always look forward to the weekend. I get out of the office. I get to preach the Word of God to people. There's always people in front of me in churches when I preach that love to hear the Word of God, and there's always people in front of me who are believers who are struggling because they frankly don't want to hear the Word of God, but I know the impact of the Word of God on them to change their life. And what a great delight to know that sitting in congregations are lost people, that when we tell them the gospel, the spirit of the living God can just come along and just burrow that truth in their soul and see them respond to the gospel. Well, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Second Peter and chapter 3. Can you right now reach over and pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there? I hope you can. If you cannot, we will read the scriptures with clarity, and we'll explain the Word of God today, applying it to our lives as believers and as those who need to come to Christ as Savior. So 2 Peter chapter 3, get your Bible, get something on which you can jot some notes. We've got some Bible study uh, outlined to kind of share today to help us pull some things together. But also, I've got a gospel tract I want to tell you about. I'll say more about that here in just a moment, but let me begin this way. Over the years, Hollywood has made a whole lot of movies based upon some end-of-the-world type storyline where it's going to be a huge meteor headed to the Earth, a, a global ice age or desert age or some atomic missile attack or something. There's been all kinds of movies that have been made. And in these movies, those that were playing the hero role had to get people to act with reality in view. You and I, who trust God's word over Hollywood and over the doomsday scientist, you and I believe that there is coming a doomsday event. Here in 2 Peter and in other places as well, God calls this event by this title, The Day of the Lord. Now, we who trust our Bibles as the inerrant and infallible word from God know that the world is going to end, but not due to some out-of-control event or some humanly contrived event. It's going to end by God's hand and God being in full control, and it's going to end for his purposes and glory. But how in the world are God's people supposed to live their lives because God will one day destroy the physical planet we live on? That's the whole point of our passage this week. Get your Bible, 2 Peter and chapter 3. I mentioned that word gospel tracts here a moment ago. The word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. A gospel tract, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The main thrust of the ministry here is not radio. We do our radio program because, number one, I love teaching the Bible, but we also want you to know about getting gospel tracts as an evangelism tool to help you spread the gospel to lost people. The particular gospel tract in my hand right now is entitled, Have You Found Rest? Have You Found Rest? Jesus said he came to bring rest to souls. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Friend, you can be involved in religion and not have rest. You can be a moral person and not have rest. You can be the most wonderful next-door neighbor and helper and social activist, but yet not have rest in your soul because your sin debt has not been dealt with. Your sinfulness before a holy God can only be dealt with through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. This gospel tract makes that so clear. Have you found rest? This is just one of the tracks that's in a sample packet I want to send you. Be ready at the end of the broadcast when my announcer gives our contact information 
He'll give three ways by which you can give to me your name and your mailing address. Do that. We'll send you free, 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 free of charge, a sample packet containing over 40 gospel tracts, each one telling with clarity the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can, by the way, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org and sign up there for that sample packet. Well, if your Bible's open to... 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning of verse 10, the Bible says this, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. We'll stop right there. In our study of chapter 3, I have used uh, a five part outline to lay out the chapter here, these 18 verses. The section before us this week is verses 11 to 16. My title for this section centers around the word follow or following. After dealing with the false teachers all through chapter 2 and then spilling over into chapter 3, and after seeing that God is going to judge sinners on a worldwide scale again, the Holy Spirit now focuses on those who know Christ. The verses 11 to 16 help us to answer one over arching question. The question is this, how do you and I follow God when sinners abound, when false teachers flourish, and there really is coming a doomsday event? How do we live? God never, ever, ever gives prophetic insight to people in one era about another era without expecting the people to whom he gives the information to start living in light of that information during their lifetime. In verses 11 to 16, there are four basic points being made here. In verses 11, 12, and 13, here we're going to find a question. In verse 14, we're going to talk about character. In verse 15, the first part of verse 15, we're given a chronology, which leads us to the second half of verse 16 and uh, verse 15 and spilling over into 16, where we're going to find a comradeship. The comradeship there is the Apostle Paul. All right, let's come back to the question talked about here in verses 11, 12, and 13. Verse 13 asks this, what manner of person ought ye to be? Notice it says ye, in a, it's a plural you. What is given here is for all believers, not merely those in church leadership. If you're taking notes, jot down some words here, all beginning with the letter T, like in the word tomato, to help me walk through verses 11, 12, and 13. The first word is the word truth. Verse 11 begins this way, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Now, that's the truth. We saw that truth starting back in verse 7. God will judge the earth on a global scale, just as he did in Noah's day. But this time, God will not use water. He's going to use fire. In verse 12, we find these words, the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Now that word dissolved here is a, frankly a very general use kind of a word. At its most fundamental meaning, it means to let loose. It means to, to unloosen something, to destroy something. It was used by John the Baptist when he said he was unworthy to unloose Jesus' shoelaces. That's the same word that's used there. But the simple point that it makes is this, that something that was together, something that was connected is not together anymore, is no longer connected. And because it's no longer connected, this object that's no longer connected no longer functions. It's no longer useful. In verse 12, we find described our physical planet and the atmosphere around us as being melting due to fire. It's all going to melt at the level of the very elements that make up our world. 
This is going to allow God to make a new heaven and a new earth that we read about here later on in these verses. All right, word number one, T word number one is the word truth. T word number two is time. Time. Now, by the use of the word time, I am not dealing with the time in which God will destroy the world. I use the word time to speak about believers right now, right at this time. The question in verse 11 asks this, what manner of persons ought ye to be? Notice the verb, to be. It does not say to become. It does not say what you should have been in the past. Peter says you and I need to be something right now now, or as my mother used to say, right now. In this very present hour, we are to be something. This opens up here to T word number three, and that word is the word type, T-Y-P-E. What type of people are the children of God to be right now in light of the fact that our world will be destroyed? Well, there's four things laid out for us here that describe us. On Wednesday's broadcast, we're going to look at the final three of them. But the very first thing mentioned here in verse 11 is that you and I are to have holy conversation or holy life pattern or a holy way of living. It ought to be not just a Sunday thing, but this is a Sunday through Sunday through Sunday, a 24-7 type of life pattern. This holiness idea has always been important to God. It was important in the Old Testament. It's important in the New Testament. It's been important to the Apostle Peter. Back in 1 Peter chapter 1, he says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Now, he says, we are to have a holy way of living our lives. At the very core of the word holy, I think you probably already know this, at the core of the word holy, the Greek word translated holy, is the idea of separation. Believers in Jesus Christ will certainly live in our sin-cursed world, but we're not to be of it. It's not to control us. The holiness of God is to control us. We are to live different or separated lives, different and separated from the way unsaved people live their lives and think about life. Because there is an eternity to be lived after our world is destroyed. Believers in our present lives begin to adjust to the caliber of life we're going to have in eternity. In eternity, we will be changed. We'll have no more sinful human nature to fight against and hinder us. Glory to God. But now, though, we have the indwelling Holy Spirit. Did you hear what he's called? We have the Holy Spirit. And because he is the Holy Spirit, he's going to help us to live holy lives. That's the goal of the Holy Spirit indwelling us in the midst of a crooked and perverse day. You and I can have holy conversation, holy life pattern. We need to pray about that. And then we need to make some changes in our life that we accomplish that with the working together factor of a Holy Spirit indwelling us. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.